First of all, I would like to thank you, WAP, uh, to give this chance to organize One Belt, One Road initiative webinar. And, and second, I would like to also thank you, distinguished panelists, whom I know more than three years. Thank you, Irina. Uh, thank you, Ilkwan, professor from United States. So uh, thank you, Burak. And we will have AIIB and Istanbul New Airport, but they will join us. Uh, but first of all, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, because I know Ilkwan from United States, I think. Right. From Ukraine, and we, we have some uh, participants from Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, uh, where I can see. So thank you very much for your participation. You know, uh, just today we have two hour, two and a half hours. We will discuss One Belt, One Road initiative and the role of PPP because, you know, we are focusing, we are touching on the PPP projects and how PPP can better public services and what is the importance of PPP projects, the time, the budget, and uh, to see the big picture uh, for these initiatives, and also some downward and some upward. And I think uh, Professor Ikwan will talk about some disadvantages of the PPP projects and the, the speed of those infrastructure projects, what will happening on the ground and what is ECG, so how we can balance all these kind of features for the PPP projects. But what is good, we will discuss the words. Yesterday, I, I was discussing with Ismail Polat, the Deputy General Director of Istanbul New Airport. He told me a very important word, which is a connectivity. So, so how we will reach the connectivity, sustainable connectivity with the sustainable infrastructure project. So we will have distinguished speakers. And I will give the floor, first of all, Mr. Burak, uh, from Yavuz Sultan Selim Bridge, which is the third bridge of Istanbul and uh, which is the uh, key infrastructure uh, investment and projects from Turkey. And we will have good insight from Burak. So the floor is yours, Mr. Burak. Thank you. Thank Please you, Mr. Go. Aydın. I'm going to share my screen. So if you tell me uh, if the screen is okay with you, I'm taking it to the presentation mode. So everything is all right, Mr. Aydan? Yes? Yeah, you can keep going. OK, OK. Course, you have 20 so, minutes. OK, so hello, everyone. Again, uh, my name is Burak, uh, and I'm working for the IC Holding. Uh, and today, I'm going to be representing uh, ICA, one of our group's company. Uh, before starting my presentation, I would like to thank uh, WAPPP and Mr. Aydin for this uh, great opportunity to share my views and the PPP model of Third Bosphorus Bridge. Uh, so, as we all know, the One Belt, One Road initiative, and that's why today we are in here. Uh, and especially in terms of our reach, we can easily say that we are connecting the continents. So uh, in the vision of One Belt, One Road, road uh, our North Marmara Motorway and the Third Bosphorus Bridge, which is the Sultan Selim Bridge, is uh, actually the connecting uh, part of this initiative. <clears throat> so what are we going to discuss today? Uh, I'm going to talk about our company, the ICA, uh, about the project, the new Pearl of Bosphorus and Turkish PPP framework uh, in terms of our project. <clears throat> and Turkish motorways with the PPPs and the uh, foreseen feature, the recent feature uh, of private motorways in the Turkey. So let's talk about our company. Uh, we are the concessionaire of the third Bosphorus Bridge, uh, which is named, uh, as I mentioned before, the Yavuz Sultan Selim Bridge. And we have, uh, in addition, the 160 kilometers of Northern Ring Motorway uh, connecting two airports, actually the Sabia Gökçen Airport and the new uh, Istanbul Grand Airport. <clears throat> we have the tender in 2012 with the PPP structure. Uh, the total uh, value of the investment is $3.5 billion. And the construction time takes uh, between 2013 and 2016. Uh, we started operation in the August 2016. And we have been operating uh, this uh, bridge and the motorway uh, since uh, four or five years. 
<clears throat> at the beginning we have only uh, 250,000 uh, users per day and now this number recently reached to uh, 550,000 daily traffic. Uh, we have a favorable location in Istanbul and uh, we are the crossroads of all passengers, especially the flight flows linking Asia to Europe. Uh, <clears throat> And uh, I can proudly say that we became the 23rd ASECAP full member by January 2018. ASECAP is the Association of Toll Rate uh, Operators uh, in Europe. So about the project, as I mentioned before, we have the Sabia Gökçen Airport and we have the third uh, airport, what we call the Istanbul Grand Airport. Uh, we have the bridge. Uh, and we're connecting uh, Europe to the Asia and the vice versa. Uh, actually, our most beneficial uh, thing is that uh, all the heavy wood vehicles uh, is an obligation to use our road. Uh, so we are just uh, decreasing the traffic in the, especially in the rush hours in the Istanbul city center. And we have uh, given the opportunity to um, drivers who is passing uh, just uh, important uh, properties in, in terms of construction and engineering. Uh, the bridge is the iconic bridge. It's the world's longest, highest, and wide suspension bridge uh, with a railway on the same deck. Uh, we have eight lines of uh, car for the cars and the, uh, for the trucks, and we have two lines uh, for the railway. So um, this is an important slide that is going to uh, make you much more clearly understand the TPP framework in Turkey. Uh, we can say that we, can, we are sharing the risks between public and the private stakeholders. So uh, we have a revenue guarantee in our model. Uh, the revenue guarantee is given by the, pub, uh, given by the public. Uh, public meaning we have KGM. KGM is the general directorate of motorways in Turkey. Uh, KGM to compensate the deficit revenue amount uh, if the actual toll revenues collected are less than the guaranteed traffic revenues calculated using the guarantee structures. So the government uh, guarantees the traffic uh, flow. Uh, but although there's a revenue guarantee, private investors, uh, which means uh, our sponsor uh, companies, sponsor parts, uh, we have the collection risk and the risks uh, cannot be able to pass to ONM company fully. Financing is our responsibility as private investors uh, and high level of ONM uh, operation and maintenance is our responsibility also. Uh, in terms of the PPP model, as you can see from the figure, we have some <clears throat> important stakeholders. We have lenders, we have the Ministry of Treasury, we have the KGM, the General Director of, of Motorways, we have the sponsors which uh, we are sponsoring the project, the company, we have the project company that we call the SPV company, uh, we have EPC contractor who is responsible for the construction, and we have the operational maintenance company. So we have uh, some different agreements, we have the stakeholder shareholders agreement, we have the EPC agreement, we have the ONM agreement and we have the loan agreement uh, and the lenders with the uh, Ministry of Treasury also have the debt assumption agreement. So actually you can see we have the traffic guarantee, but uh, all the stakeholders in the figure uh, are sharing the risk together. Uh, in this slide, we can much more see detail and what's going on with this uh, flow. We have the traffic guarantee based on the fixed uh, annual average daily traffic for the bridge and the mo motorway separately. We uh, have the traffic guarantee for the motorway and also we have the traffic guarantee for the bridge too. The KGM, the general director of motorways to compensate the deficit revenue amount, amount uh, if the actual total revenues collected are less than the guaranteed traffic revenues uh, calculated using the guarantee structure. And guarantee payments shall be paid annually by the end of April of the following fiscal year. This is the uh, traffic guarantee model. <clears throat> so we have the guarantees defined in the US dollar terms, uh, annual effects and USD inflation adjustments for toll tariffs, 
uh, and toll tariffs are registered for the CPI in January uh, when official information is released. And we have the financing guarantee, Turkish state treasury provides guarantees on loans and related financial obligations, uh, for instance, 90% of senior debt amount. Uh, so uh, in the near future, we're planning to actually the government plans to uh, decrease the private motorways in the PPP motorway. Uh, as you can see from the map, uh, the the colors uh, with the uh, yellow uh, green ones are motorways operated via BOT models, field operated transfer model, which is like, as we call the PPP models, you can see the green ones. Uh, the red ones are the open motorways and they are just operating with the, by the government's hand. And we have the under construction motorways, which is uh, Chanakkale uh, bridge and uh, its motor way. Uh, so we have five projects that are all under operation with the PPP model, this model that I mentioned before. Uh, and two projects are already under investment. Uh, one project is under tender, which is in the southern part of Turkey. And it's ex expected to have 12 more projects to be tendered soon. Uh, it's a huge kilometers, but uh, we're going to see in time that's what's going to happen in the near future. So uh, I'm going to accept all questions after the presentation, and uh, this is about uh, what I'm going to speak with the Turkey's development of PPP structure. Uh, thank you for listening to me and sharing your time with me. Okay. Is uh, everything is okay? Yes, the, it's great. It's great. great. Okay. Yes. Hello, everyone. And uh, I am Irina Zapatrina, uh, and uh, I am founder of PPP of PPP Academy in Ukraine and uh, uh, chairman of the board uh, PPP Center, non governmental center. And uh, today I would like uh, uh, to talk with you about the um, role of PPP uh, in One Belt and One Road initiative uh, in Ukraine. And uh, now, oh, okay. And uh, I would like to start with uh, basic principles and advantages of this initiative and their importance for Ukraine. Uh, as you see, and uh, this um, uh, main principle and advantages and all of them are uh, very important for Ukraine. Uh, first of uh, them uh, is important for all countries and for our countries also. And if you talk about uh, sustainable and resilient infrastructure, uh, I have to say that Ukraine uh, have a huge needs in uh, such an infrastructure. And what is important, we have huge need in uh, insurance of environmental uh, friendliness of existing infrastructure. And we need for this uh, uh, private uh, partner also, not only state, state budget, budget um, uh, money. And also um, one of the principal of one, uh, one Belt, One Road initiative is uh, preventing social and political conflicts. And in my view, uh, such a conflicts uh, often occur in the territories uh, with the poor infrastructure. And in this context, we also need uh, to develop, uh, to support such initiative and to develop appropriate projects. Uh, at the moment, Ukraine uh, has no infrastructure projects that are implementing in the framework of the uh, One Belt, One Road initiative. But at the same time, Ukraine was one of the first uh, who joined to this initiative in 2015, uh, when we signed the appropriate protocol be between the, our Ministry of, of Economy, uh, Ministry of Economy of Ukraine and Ministry of uh, Commerce of the People's Republic of China from the other side. And in December 2017, uh, Ukraine China action plan was signed, and some measures uh, was adopted for this plan implementation. Uh, 
but uh, nothing uh, was done in the context of infrastructure development in accordance with this plan. Uh, but uh, this summer, uh, on uh, June 30, uh, we, uh, the new um, agreement between the uh, Ministry of Infrastructure of Ukraine and Ministry of Commerce and People Republic of China uh, was signed. And uh, this is very important uh, agreement. Uh, and uh, in accordance with uh, it, uh, our countries uh, Sorry, telephone. Uh, our countries have to encourage companies and financial institutions uh, of both countries uh, to cooperation and uh, some uh, financial support from the uh, China uh, was uh, um, mentioned in this agreement. Uh, uh, and uh, also, uh, we have to promote um, establishment of close economic uh, cooperation uh, of companies, uh, including uh, uh, based on PPP. And uh, we are waiting now approval of potential cooperation projects, which will be implemented in accordance with this agreement, uh, in, uh, including PPO on PPP. Uh, what is uh, necessary to accelerate uh, the initiative and accelerate uh, um, participation of our country in this initiative and in uh, um, this agreement implementations? Uh, first of all, it's uh, development of trade relation is understandable. Uh, the second, we have to create developed and sustainable infrastructure, which provide for logistic safety uh, for such uh, trade relations and also uh, will be environmentally friendly. And uh, to achieve this task, we need uh, to have innovative mechanism uh, for uh, such infrastructure development, including uh, public-private partnership mechanism. And also we need to um, uh, develop uh, institutional structure, which allow us to implement uh, multilateral, multi-regional projects because each country has uh, own uh, um, institutional base, own approach to such projects implementation. And we have to understand uh, each other. And uh, for this, uh, also very important is uh, uh, humanitarian projects and humanitarian issues, because uh, we have to understand each other, understand tradition, mentality, and uh, establish partner relationship between the real people. Uh, otherwise, it uh, will be very difficult or even uh, uh, impossible to implement such infrastructure projects, uh, especially on PPP base. And uh, I will start to, to very shortly uh, discuss all this issue. If you talk about trade development, uh, uh, then I have to say that Ukraine has a very good uh, location for trade between uh, Europe and Asia, as in Turkey, and we are very close and we uh, could be uh, chains of this uh, big uh, road, big task uh, implementation. And uh, unfortunately, uh, the existing potential of Ukraine is not fully used now. And the main, re uh, main reason for this is uh, non-sufficient, uh, non-good uh, 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 infrastructure, non-good infrastructure for this. And uh, uh, based on this, uh, we need to develop the, our port, railroad, and road infrastructure. And uh, PPP should play a crucial role in this process, uh, especially in the uh, uh, condition of uh, coronavirus, because we have no such uh, uh, necessary money in the state budget and, and the other public budget uh, to, um, uh, to implement such task. And uh, uh, 
uh, for this, I would like to consider different uh, possibilities uh, for Ukraine uh, to develop uh, such infrastructure, uh, different type as overland infrastructure and uh, maritime infrastructure. If you talk about maritime uh, uh, infrastructure, I would like uh, to say that now we have uh, we are very active in the Ukrainian port development. Uh, our specialists, our specialist and China specialists uh, have held uh, consultation about mutual, um, mutual participation in the development of the Trans-Caspian International Transport Route. Uh, and uh, in um, our port, Ilichovska, Desa, Yuzhny, Olve, Kherson can play a crucial role in uh, this uh, road uh, uh, establishing. And uh, we have to say that uh, most of this port needs uh, reconstruction and modernization. And uh, we are starting to implement a program of modernization of this port. Uh, last year, two concession agreements were signed uh, for the Kherson port, you can see here, and uh, Olvia port, it's uh, uh, in Mykolaiv city, uh, which uh, these projects have been uh, prepared uh, with support of uh, IFC and EBRD and appropriate agreement signed. Very shortly about uh, this agreement, uh, uh, the concession port uh, uh, agreement was signed uh, in July last year. The duration of agreement 30 years and the uh, concessioner uh, Resol Kherson company, which uh, is company uh, belong to companies of uh, Georgia, Switzerland, two countries, so it's uh, not a local company. And the uh, investment in accordance with concession agreement is uh, uh, not so much money, it's 53 million. Uh, you see the concession fee on the screen. And the um, concessionaire in accordance with this agreement should increase up to 80% of the share of car uh, cargo going to the port using rail, inland waterway, and other modes of transport, except road. And uh, the second concession agreement uh, for Olvia airport uh, was uh, concluded by a big uh, company from the Qatar, it's Q Terminal uh, company. It was uh, duration of this agreement uh, uh, 35 years and uh, the investment uh, in uh, this um, project's implementation will be uh, approximately 135 million dollars and uh, uh, some investment also proposed for the uh, development city infrastructure and the concessionaire Q terminals have to ensure a minimum cargo volume handling at least two and a half million stone per year from the six year from the date of the concession signing. So uh, this, it's, uh, these two concession projects are first uh, good uh, prepared concession projects in Ukraine uh, in accordance with international standards. And now we are um, analyze how these projects are implemented and which problems uh, uh, occur under their implementation. And uh, we have the national transport strategy in Ukraine uh, that uh, calls for implementation of uh, many other concession projects, which uh, are now on the stage of uh, preparation of concept note in the Ministry of Infrastructure. It's, for example, uh, the projects uh, in uh, concession projects in Chernomorsk city is very close to um, Odessa and also in Mariupol airport and Berdyan airport. And uh, we uh, hope that uh, very soon these concept notes will be adopted 
and the uh, feasibility study will be prepared and we will have uh, another good concession uh, projects um, implemented. Uh, not so good situation we have with uh, the railroad transportation. Uh, we have a lot uh, of um, uh, rebel uh, assets in Ukraine. And uh, you see the information about um, our railway transport uh, network. I will not read this or, uh, to save a time, maybe for other questions. Uh, but I have to say that quality of our railroad infrastructure is not good enough. And even if we uh, improve our port, we cannot uh, use uh, them uh, fully and uh, very effective because we have some problem with uh, railroad uh, uh, systems. And um, at the moment, unfortunately, we have no any essential infrastructure projects uh, in this field, uh, not only implemented, but also those which are preparing, including on the PPP basis. Now the Ministry of Infrastructure is only involved in preparation uh, concession projects for railroad station, but it uh, don't resolve the problems which exist in this infrastructure. Uh, but uh, we hope that it uh, will be a next uh, step in uh, uh, attracting private business uh, to this project's implementation on the basis of PPP. Uh, but uh, two days ago, uh, the first export train from Ukraine to China uh, with uh, 43 containers uh, start. And uh, our ministry uh, sure that uh, it will be regular uh, road and we, we will have a lot of uh, uh, such uh, trains which will uh, move from uh, Ukraine and connect Ukraine and uh, China uh, through the other countries. And uh, we have uh, the um, more uh, perspective and progressive situation with uh, the, our road reconstruction. reconstruction. Uh, if you visiting, visited Ukraine before, you maybe know that we have not so good roads, especially in uh, rural territories, but uh, uh, for the last year, the situation uh, changed very much. Uh, last year, the president of Ukraine started the big construction projects. It's a large scale development of high quality infrastructure in Ukraine. And we started from the road. Uh, uh, last year, all these projects um, uh, funded uh, by the public budget, by our state road fund. But now we uh, start uh, uh, the PPP projects in, in the framework of this prog uh, program, with, uh, which will be uh, partially financed by state budget uh, for uh, using the availability payments, uh, and uh, maybe some of this road will be uh, financed uh, uh, and will be structured as a concession agreement. Uh, last year, uh, more than uh, 6,000 kilometers of road uh, uh, was reconstructed in the framework of this uh, program. It's more than uh, 4,000 kilometers of uh, uh, state importance road and uh, 2,500 kilometers of local road. And also 200, near 260 bridge. It's very important work was done and people who visited, uh, uh, visited Ukraine, uh, visiting Ukraine now, they see how the situation changed. And uh, in this year, we have to reconstruct uh, near uh, six and six, uh, 6 6.6 thousand kilometers of roads. We will see how it's happened, but I think that we achieve this task. And uh, for the next year, we will, uh, our country will work not only on reconstruction on road, 
uh, in the context of this, uh, in the framework of this pro program, but we also plan to develop uh, on CRL connection, uh, and it's very important. And uh, as I mentioned before, uh, the, we also planning additionally uh, to attract private business to ro road construction and reconstruction. And uh, in the end uh, of uh, the last year, the PPP road program uh, was prepared by the Minister of of infrastructure of Ukraine with uh, huge support of uh, International Financial Corporation and uh, this YBRD. Uh, and uh, this PPP road project was subdivided on three phases. And the uh, first phase um, uh, consists of six road for which already concept note uh, have been prepared and uh, adopted uh, by uh, the appropriate ministries. And now is uh, the feasibility study for these first six projects are preparing. And all these uh, first uh, six projects uh, will be uh, implemented using uh, government paid mechanism, not so risky for the private partners. Uh, the availability payment uh, will be paid to the private partners on non-concession PPP agreement uh, using uh, our state uh, road for fund. And uh, I think it will be very interesting for investors to participate in uh, this uh, PPP road program. And we also have a lot of uh, many interesting uh, infrastructure projects that uh, could be implemented uh, in the framework of uh, um, uh, Belt and Road Initiative. And uh, we think that uh, some of these projects will, will be included in this list, which should be prepared uh, in accordance uh, with recently signed agreement between our Ministry of Infrastructure and Ministry of Commerce of uh, China. And uh, among these uh, projects is a bridge over the Dnieper River uh, near the Kremenchuk city. It's a very huge project for building ring road around the key, which discussed um, maybe five years and uh, now we are waiting that uh, we already start to implement them. It's new line of the Kiev uh, city metro. Uh, it's a lot of waste recycling plants uh, and also it's uh, LNG terminal near Odessa, which also already started uh, prepared before, but uh, don't uh, finish. And uh, to implement all these projects, we need, of course, uh, innovative mechanism for infrastructure development. And our Turkish colleagues know that each project needs uh, the own innovative mechanism to structure in them. And uh, the good news is that uh, the, we, uh, we have excellent uh, legislation in Ukraine now. In uh, 2019, uh, uh, the new concession law uh, was adopted in Ukraine and uh, um, uh, PPP law with, uh, was uh, uh, changed uh, sufficiently and other laws also and uh, uh, World Bank and uh, European Bank of Reconstruction and Development uh, assisted us in this work and now we have really excellent legislation with, uh, with, uh, which allow to structure, uh, to structure it, to develop the really uh, huge and very complicated projects uh, using the innovative mechanism. Uh, we have a uh, different form of PPP in Ukraine, it's concession and it's um, non-concession PPP, government based PPP and mix agreement. And uh, we can use a different form for different projects, uh, very flexible. We have 
a lot of form of government support in Ukraine, and uh, mostly it should be implemented for en environmentally friendly projects and for social projects, but also for some uh, concession roads and so on. And uh, we have a rather good step and right procedure that allow uh, film very comfortable uh, um, uh, banks uh, and other financial institution and also private partners. Uh, uh, and uh, we also have uh, good opportunities for unsolicited proposals in Ukraine. But uh, until now, uh, we still have uh, no a lot of uh, PPP or concession projects. Uh, we have only two good uh, uh, prepared concession projects in port. Uh, other projects uh, have been prepared many years ago using the old legislation for small projects and uh, they are not, uh, how to say, so so interesting to, to show them to public. And uh, the reason is it's low institutional capacity of uh, our public authorities because uh, our legislation is not simple. It's uh, very uh, comprehensive and uh, our public authorities uh, uh, don't understand exactly how to apply this in practice. And that is why the international financial institution, uh, it's uh, World Bank, it's uh, European Bank Reconstruction and Development, and it's uh, International Financial Corporation assist uh, to our ministries in preparation such projects, and also attract uh, foreign consultants and uh, advisors uh, uh, to prepare such projects. And uh, it was done for two concession, two first concession projects in ports. And now uh, these international institutions, uh, donors worked with the Ministry of Infrastructure uh, um, with preparation of this PPP road projects and other seaport projects and uh, will work for railroad also. Uh, but uh, we have uh, good, as I mentioned before, we have good possibility for unsolicited proposals, and uh, they are very attractive for our for private business. That is why.